Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Welcome to part one of my series on graphs of functions. Let's get right to it. We're gonna start off with cubic graphs. So sketch each graph showing the coordinates of any points of intersection with the coordinate axes. So just like with quadratics, when we find the roots, we wanna factorize. Now here we already have factorized quadratics. So x plus 1 means it would cross the x-axis at minus 1. Then x minus 1 would mean it would cross the x-axis at 1. And then x minus 3 would mean it would cross the x-axis at 3. Now to work out where it crosses the y-axis, we make x equal 0. Now that just means that the x values disappear. So we'd be doing 1 times minus 1 times minus 3. So that gives you 3. So it crosses the y-axis at 3. Now, some things that we don't know is the turning points of the cubic graphs. Now, if they don't ask, it doesn't matter. So it's just a sketch. They haven't said indicate the, where the turning points are. So in the exam, they're just going to look at the shape of the graph, not the exact pinpoint of the turning points. They would have to ask you to work those out if they want those. Now, we know the general form for a cubic starts from below and then goes up. So in this case, going from minus 1, we're coming down. Then we're coming up, we're going to cross at 3, and then we're going to come down, and then come back up. Now there'll be different variations to this because of where that these turning points are. Now that you could have had a turning point that passed 3, or before 3, it doesn't matter because they haven't asked for it. Okay, the next one, x squared, x minus 4. Now when you make x minus 4 equals 0, you're going to have a turning point at 4. And x squared, when you make x squared equal 0, you just get x is 0. Now, the only difference is because it's x squared, it's a double root. So it's a bit like how you would sketch y equals x minus 1 squared. That's a quadratic that is shifted to the right by 1. And it would just touch the x-axis. Same thing here. It's a graph that comes from below. And it's not going to pass 0. It's just going to touch the x-axis and come back down. So you can see it makes that quadratic shape. But then it's going to come back up, turn again to 4, then it's just going to keep going back up. So that's that sketch. Now here, it, you can see already across the y-axis at 0, right? And if you made x equals 0, the whole thing just becomes 0. All right, next one. So ignoring the minus for a second, it crosses at minus 2, minus 1, and 2. Minus 2, minus 1, and 2. Where does it cross the y-axis? It will be 2 times 1 times minus 2. So that will give you uh, minus 4. But remember, there is a minus in the front. So with a minus in the front, instead of it crossing at minus 4, it crosses at 4. Now, because there is a minus, it's a negative cubic. Because it's x times x times x is x cubed. With the minus in the front, it's a minus x cubed. So how does it look? It's going to start from the top now being a negative cubic, and it's going to come back up. And then again, it's one of those questions where you don't exactly know where that turning point is going to be, but it doesn't matter because they've not asked for it. Then it comes back down. So remember, negative cubic start from the top and work their way down. Positive cubic start from the bottom and work their way up. One way I like to remember it is that with positive cubics, I think about the Drake song, in it. So it starts from the bottom and then it works its way up. Start from the bottom, now we're here. That's so bad, right? But that's just how my students like to remember it. So cubics start from the bottom, work their way up. Negative cubics start from the top and they work their way down. So that's not a good thing, right? So negative, start from the top, work your way down. Now x minus 2 cubed. This one, the easiest way to think of it is that it's the traditional, well, the original x cubed graph shifted by 2 to the right. Yeah, So if you had f of x is x cubed, then f of x minus 2 would be x minus 2 cubed. So that's a shift to the right by 2. Now what does a cubic look like? It comes up, then it goes flat, and then comes back up. So you want to do that as best you can. Flat, and then makes its way back up. 
We can work our way across as the y-axis, just make x equals 0. You have minus 2 cubed, which is minus 8, which is our cubic. The diagram shows the curve with equation ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Given that the curve crosses the y-axis at 0, minus 8, and the x-axis at minus 2, 1, 2, um, find a, b, c, and d, which we can see in the diagram. Now, what we do know is that because it crosses the x-axis at minus 2, 1, 2, we know what its brackets will be. If the root was minus 2, it would have been x plus 2, then it would have been x minus 1, and then it would have been x minus 2. But what we need to double check is if these numbers multiply to give the y-intercept. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, times minus 2 is 4, but we want it to be minus 8. 4 times what is minus 8? is minus 2. And we can see that it's a negative cubic, right? It's starting from the top and working its way down. Now all that's left to do is expand the brackets. My advice is to always expand the last two. It makes the other expansion a bit easier um, in terms of arrows. So we have x squared minus 2x minus x is minus 3x, then plus 2. Then multiply in the x minus 2. x times everything gives you x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. Then we're doing 2 times everything, so 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. Simplify x cubed minus 3 plus 2 is minus x squared. 2 minus 6 is minus 4x. Then we have plus 4. Then finally we multiply in the minus 2, so minus 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 8x and then we have minus 8. And that's our solution. Let's look at cortex. So cortex, similar principle, we just look at where does it cross the x-axis. So if you have x, x minus 1, x plus 5, x minus 2. So the x would give a root of 0, then we would have 1, then we would have minus 5, and we would have 2. Now cortex look like quadratics in the sense they come from the top, down, and then back up. The only difference is that cortex are a bit more flat at zero. So a similar principle here is going to start from the top, come down, then it's going to turn towards the other root, then it's going to turn again to go through zero, to, through one, sorry, then turn again to go through two, and then make its way back up. So cortex, variations of the cortex look a bit like W shapes. The next one, and in that one, the y-intercept is zero because there's an x on the outside. Next one, x squared. That means the root would be at zero. Then x plus one, x minus one. So the roots are one and minus one. Same, same thing. It's going to come down, then it's going to turn. Now here we have to be careful. It's x squared, it's a double root. So it's only going to touch at the axes and then come back down and then make its way back up. Now this is a symmetrical, um, a symmetrical quartic about the y-axis. Minus x, x plus 1 cubed. So minus x, the x means it's going to go through 0. x plus 1 means minus 1. Now interestingly, what do cubed roots look like? We know squared means it touches the axes. Cubed, you can think of it as it looks like the cubic graph at that point. Now remember, positive cortex come down, but negative ones, because it's a minus on the outside, are going to come from the bottom. It's going to go flat at minus 1, making that cubic shape, but then it has to turn and go through 0. Last one, x minus 1 to the power 4. So this is the original cortex graph shifted to the right by 1. So it crossed out 1, and remember we, we looked at it in the last slide, it's going to come down and go a bit more flat at 1, and then come back up again. So it looks like a, a quartic, uh, a cubic, uh, no sorry, a quadratic. Now where does it cross the y-axis? You make x equal 0, you have minus 1 to the power of 4, which is just 1. The final ones are reciprocal graphs. Now we sure know what reciprocal graphs look like from GCSE. They don't touch the axes but they go towards the axes. 
Now, what does that mean about the axes? Is that they are known as asymptotes. So the y axis, the y -axis is an asymptote meaning the graph goes towards the y-axis but never actually touches it and the x-axis is also an asymptote. So the y-axis is x equals 0, that's this equation, and y equals 0. Yeah, and the reason the y-axis is an asymptote is because if x is 0, if you were to sub into here, you would have 1 divided by 0, which doesn't make sense. Why is the x-axis an asymptote? If you sub in y is 0, and you times through by x, you get 0 equals 1, which doesn't make sense. So these are values. Asymptotes are basically values of x and y, which are undefined. Yeah, they don't give you values. They don't make sense. Now, what they do in the exam is they like to make you draw multiple graphs on one for recip graphs so that you know where the positioning is properly. Because if you draw them separately, if you draw 2 over x and 1 over x on different diagrams, you can't tell which one's which, so they like you to draw them on the same ones. Now, 2 over x just means it has double the y values, which means it will just lay over the other graph. So this would be y equals 2 over x with the same asymptotes. Minus 3 over x is the same graph, but we're timesing all the y values by negative 1, which means if we look at the first quadrant, this is the first quadrant, you would times all the y values by negative 1, which would mean it would go underneath. And this is the third quadrant. If you times all of those y values by minus 1, it just gets reflected back up. So this is what it would look like with the same asymptotes of x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now we need to know the quadratic reciprocals. Now, what do the quadratic reciprocals do? Because it has x squared, all that means is all the negative x values get squared, which means they have the same y values as the positive x values. So the positive x values don't get squared because if you, uh, sorry, the positive x values do not change because if you square a positive x value, nothing happens, right? But if you were to sub in x is minus 1, because you square it, it has the same y value as 1. Yeah, if you sub in x is minus 2, when you square that, you get 4. So it has the same y value as x is 2. Which means you actually have a reflection here where it looks exactly the same, just on the other side. Minus 1 would have the exact same y value as 1. Yeah, minus 1 and 1, same y value. 2 would have the exact same y value as minus 2. Now, what about minus 5 over x squared? Well, that's just timesing all the y values by minus 1. So everything that we see on the left side gets reflected down. All the positive y values are now negative y values. Now, the exact same as the, the original recip graph, we have asymptotes at x is 0 and y is 0, and that's the same for both. Okay, guys, so this concludes the first bit of graphs of functions where we've looked at what the graphs look like. In the future, in a future episode, we're going to look at the exponential graphs and we're going to look at logarithmic graphs because you need to know those, but that will be in a different chapter. Uh, next, we're going to look at transformations of functions and graph intersections and how to answer those questions. If you learned something today, guys, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed for more maths content. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace.